Blood sugar, take four. Just kidding guys. Today we're gonna put blood sugar on the back burner and we're gonna create something that has some warm tones, some cool tones, some mattes, and some intense shimmer. So if you wanna see how I created this look, then keep watching. So I'm starting with this light shade from the Wet n Wild Rose in the Air eyeshadow palette, um, just to set my brow bone. Next, I'm gonna go into Tangy Dijon by Vanessa's Vanity. I love shadows like this that give your overall look kind of like this pretty ugly kind of vibe. But I feel like me being a dude in makeup, I feel like, I don't know, I guess I can kind of get away with wearing like kind of really ugly, grungy, dirty. But really, I feel like anybody can wear whatever they want. You just have to be confident about it and just say, fuck it, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna wear it and I don't care. You know, you see a lot of this kind of stuff on the internet, but I don't know that you really see a lot of this in real life. But this just goes back to the whole like, I don't see a lot of people in real life wearing like a ton of makeup like I see on the internet, so. I know that they try to make these kind of colors semi-popular with a subculture palette, but that really didn't seem to go over too well. Not necessarily because of the colors, but because of the formula. And I don't know, I have this thing lately where like, I, I feel like I have this need that I have to go buy the subculture palette. I don't know what it is about it. I think a lot of it is just wanting to see if I'm able to like make it work. So now I'm gonna go into this transition shade from the same Wet n Wild palette. And this is from the palette that is widely known as a dupe for the modern Renaissance palette. But I feel like that color story has definitely been seen and done over and over again. And I mean, I fall for it every time. I love it. So, I mean, you know, everything's done, everything's done to death and then everything's redone. And definitely expect to see a subculture video in the near future because I feel like that's gonna be purchased after I get this video recorded. <laughs> I'm not even gonna start editing. I'm gonna like get this makeup on, I'm gonna run to Ulta, and I'm gonna buy some eyeshadow that I don't fucking need. Now on that same 217, I'm gonna dip into I'm Into It. This is a really good one. It's a great color. It's got great pigmentation. It blends out really good. Over the past like maybe a year or two, um, the ones that I like are their matte shadows where MAC matte shadows used to be awful. They used to be really bad and I feel like their shimmery shadows were good. Um, and it seems like the shimmery shadows that I've picked up over the last few years, they haven't really worked out that well at all for me, so. But after Blood Sugar and the 3502 Second Nature palette that I picked up recently, I feel like I never need to buy another red or warm brown eyeshadow ever again in my life. <laughs> in fact, what I need to do and what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to do a major purge. I feel like with all the purges that I've ever done, the one thing that I never really seem to purge is eyeshadow, because I always just kind of feel like, oh, it's a powder product, it doesn't go bad. And so I just keep every single one of them. I wanna do that with lip glosses, I wanna do that with lipsticks. I mean, everything I have to put on my lips is another shade of nude that, again, like once they're on your lip, really all kind of reads the same. So what do you guys think? Would you like to see like a decluttering slash purge video? Would that be something you're interested in watching? I mean, do you like to watch people go through their shit and get rid of stuff? Cause I feel like I've said shit 15 times in the last like two minutes. I wanna bring that kind of orangey tone through that transition and kind of up into the eyebrows just a little bit. So then on a dirty R39, I'm gonna dip into, this is either Embark or Handwritten by MAC, and I'm not sure which one. This eyeshadow I've had for so many years, and by years, I mean definitely a decade. And I'm pretty sure that I have like 10 or 15 colors that look exactly like this, um, and I definitely have shades like this in some of the more recent purchases I've made, like the giant Morphe palettes, there are definitely dupes of this color in those, which probably blend out just as well. So I probably should go ahead and get rid of this. There's a few staples that I definitely, once I do my purge, Carbon by MAC is my favorite black. So the one that I have now, I've had probably longer than I've had this one. And MAC shadows are so cheap that I can go ahead and just replace that one. 
And again, just a few other staples, not anything that's like, you know, I don't need to go replace everything in my arsenal. I mean, I already kind of have replaced them with, you know, different brands and different formulas, but at the same time, sometimes you just want those, uh, sometimes you just want those classics. Sometimes you just want those staples for your collection. And I'm definitely a huge fan of mixing both warm tones and cool tones in the same look. Kind of keeps everything balanced and pretty and not just so like one way or the other. Now dipping back into Embark or Handwritten, whichever one this is, on a Mac 221. And I just want to really, really, really deepen the socket there. So when I put this next shade down, it just makes it pop so much more and it pops a lot on its own. So now I'm gonna go into a shade that I am fucking obsessed with. It's called Vintage Champagne by Vanessa's Vanity. It's so good. It's so amazing. Her products are so freaking good. Her store is on Etsy. You can go look at all of her shadows and highlighters. She has liquid highlighters, powder highlighters, eyeshadows, all kinds of stuff. Are you ready for this? Watch this shit. Look at that. Look at that. That is fucking good. I'll tell you what, these indie brands are fucking hitting it out of the park. Like, that's ridiculous. I've never used like a high-end shadow. I've never used like, I've never used like an Ulta or Sephora brand that does what that shadow did. Like, that's crazy. And I have a discount code if you guys want to use it. It'll save you 15% off of your entire order. Just type in Glam Punk at checkout and you'll save 15%. Now on this Dirty 221, I'm gonna dip right back into Vintage Champagne, just to kind of soften the edges of that out a little bit. It's so metallic, I love it. Yeah, there are so many big companies that obviously we're all gonna support. I mean, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave filming this and go buy a Anastasia palette but I think that we should definitely be supporting the little guys, especially when they're creating colors and quality like this. I mean, this is fucking crazy. God, I'm such a huge fan of that. So we're gonna use this tiny nub of coffee on my waterline again. Yeah, I'd like to give a shout out and a huge thanks to Vanessa's Vanity for reaching out and making me an affiliate. It's cool that she liked my pictures and liked my makeup and you know, it's like the little guy helping out the little guy. And I think that's cool. And it's cool when a store owner kind of takes notice of what you're doing and likes what you're doing and kind of wants to help you out a little bit. I mean, I've got this tiny little infant of a channel here and I know that, you know, probably a lot of people are more into watching like the bigger beauty gurus, which I'm not a beauty guru by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I'm just a dude that likes to wear makeup. I'm not getting into the basic formula of, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna give you all of the information on this palette and then we're gonna do swatches and then we're gonna give you like a tutorial with a review. And you know, I didn't wanna come off by sounding like a dick when I said that, you know, I wasn't gonna do swatches of the blood sugar palette, um, you know, or whatever. And I hope I didn't come across that way. But um, I was always the guy that was more into gory over story. So it's like, you know, I'm not trying to have like a whole lot of backstory and a whole lot of extra shit going on. Like fucking, you know, get to the point and get into it, you know. Coming here to my channel, you're gonna get what I've been giving you. I'm gonna hang out, I'm gonna do makeup. I just wanna rock and roll all night and party every day. You're not gonna get religion, you're not gonna get politics, you're not gonna get my emotional baggage, because honestly, I don't have any of that, honestly. I don't have any of that. Some makeup looks might look better than others, um, you know, because for the most part, I just kind of sit down with maybe a little bit of an idea of what I'm gonna do, and then I just go ahead and paint my face for like an hour, and then I film it, and I edit it, and I upload it to YouTube, and you know, that's just kind of how I live my life, really. Another thing that I've noticed in a lot of the videos that I watch 
there's a thing where, and I mean, you know, I ask for you guys to give my videos a thumbs up um, because it, you know, it helps me gain exposure, um, which is the reality of the situation. The more likes and the more thumbs up that a video has, the more likely it is to reach other viewers and kind of pop up in people's sidebars. And I think it's kind of the nice thing to do. If you like a video, give it a thumbs up. Why not? You're already there. Um, but there is one in particular that I watch and in their videos, they always do this thing where they're like, well, I want you to like it because if you if you give it a thumbs up, then I know that that means that you like it. I'm like, and again, I'm gonna be completely honest. Like, you know, I want you guys to give my video a thumbs up to help my channel grow. Um, I would love to get more exposure. I think that that would be really fucking cool. And if you give this video a thumbs up, not only does that mean you like this video, but again, that's gonna help it reach another viewer and then another viewer. And I think with the algorithm of all social media platforms being in this weird place that they are right now, I'm on Instagram and you know, I'll see things that pop up from like three days ago um, and it'll be alongside something that happened 45 minutes ago. I feel like the same is true for YouTube as well. Um, if you aren't liking videos that you're watching, um, then at some point, at some point your videos just kind of fall by the wayside and then people don't even realize that you're posting videos. Like they have no idea because you just don't come up in their feed because you're not being interactive, you know what I mean? And again, I'm not exactly sure what I want to get out of YouTube as far as growing my channel goes. I'm not trying to start my own makeup brand. I have no interest in that. I'm not looking for a career change. I already have a career. This isn't, even if you thought you were gonna make a career out of YouTube, and I think that's where a lot of the complaining comes from on YouTube, is because I think that people kind of relied on YouTube to be their livelihood and their career. And then just like everything else, everything's a trend. What goes up must come down and you can't rely on something like this kind of platform to be like, your career for the rest of your life. Like it's just not gonna happen. And so for me, it's like, if this was to ever grow and get really big and kind of come to a head and make me some kind of money, you know what I'm gonna do with that money? I'm gonna get all kinds of plastic surgery. I'm gonna fucking waste it. Um, I'm gonna keep my regular job that I have now and that's gonna be like my money that like pays my bills and pays for me to live and gives me extra spending money. And all of the money that I would ever make off of YouTube, I would get a facelift. I would get some body sculpting. Like I would get all that shit that I wanna do to myself that I don't necessarily have the money to do and don't really wanna finance and have to get a loan for. Um, again, I wanna be 100% transparent with you guys. And then to highlight, I'm gonna go into an old classic that I had honestly kind of forgotten about until recently. I'm gonna go into Soft and Gentle by MAC on a 219. Uh, I'm gonna dip into that and uh, hit that inner corner. Now, Soft and Gentle is good. And I, you know why I like Soft and Gentle? Because it is real subtle. Um, I think you can probably build this up to be a little bit more blinding, but this is a pretty subtle highlight. I like it. Now, this is definitely never gonna take the place of my Posh Pepper Beauty highlighters, but uh, sometimes you wanna revisit those, uh, those old favorites and those old classics. A Morphe M510 for the uh, cheekbone. Like for me, like the color is definitely very soft and very gentle, but I think it still has like some good intensity. So I had already used the Buxom Lip Plumping Gloss in the color Star, but I'm gonna go over top of that with another old classic. Uh, this is Oh Baby Lip Glass by MAC. And I think that every lip product should smell like a MAC lip product. And with that, we've got ourselves a final look. I'm gonna go ahead and leave some links below to both Posh Pepper Beauty and to Vanessa's Vanity. They've got really, really, really great products at a really affordable price point. And again, use my discount code, save yourself some more money. If you like this video, if you wanna see more, if you wanna see my channel grow, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscription button down below. Make sure to tell all your friends about it so they know to watch. And I'll see you on the next one.